Well, it's time to talk Gaelic games, and in particular, our standout feature this weekend here in Highland. It is, of course, the semi-final of the Ulster Senior Football Championship, where uh, old rivals are going to clash for a place in the big decider. It's Donegal against Cavan. And uh, to look forward to the game, I'm joined by uh, two men who are Ulster winners, and they are all-stars from Donegal and Cavan, uh, Mark McHugh and Dermot McCabe. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Highland. Yes, Archie. Hi, Archie. Uh, Dermot, first time having you on, so it's it's great to see you and and uh, and, and good to talk to you. Um, how's life in Cavan at the moment? I know I know you're a very busy man, and you, as we said, a former Ulster winner and All Star, and uh, you uh, you played your part in Cavan football. You were assistant manager last year to Mickey Graham. You're the current coaching officer in in the Breffney County. So I would say life's busy for you at the moment, is it, Dermot? Yeah. Uh, first off, thanks very much, Oshin, on the invitation. Uh, yeah, I suppose it's a bit weekend. Uh, we had our under twenties out a couple of weeks ago, and seniors and minors out the first weekend. Uh, this weekend we have our minors and our seniors out, and hopefully we're we're confident or quietly confident in, in, in both games, and that we can get a result. Is there a confidence then you're saying, and and Kevin that that Kevin can overturn Donegal again because it was a bit of a shock a couple of years ago? Uh, would it be seen as such a big shock if it was to happen again, Dermot? Um, I, I suppose uh, Cavan had a so-so sort of league campaign, but I suppose tactically the games are very difficult in that it's packed defences and it's it's very closed up and, and stop start probably in Division 4. Uh, Cavan were building towards getting promotion and got that. And, and then a key of a potential stumbling block, uh, sort of Corrigan Park or nowhere sort of approach, you know, was a danger. And, and, and Cavan were very comprehensive were, I would say, very impressive and, and very well structured in that game. And they would take confidence on that. They have they have won the Division 4 Cup. They, they were comfortable in Corrigan Park and, and they've checked all the boxes so far. So um, I, I think the players might look at it and say that, you know, they would have felt they performed the best in 2020 in that, in that Ulster final and maybe didn't uh, get the, the recognition that perhaps they deserved, that maybe people were saying that, that Donegal took it for granted and, and maybe they might want to go out and prove that it was no uh, fluke and, and they can repeat that success. Yeah, uh, we'll bring Martin in. Martin, you of course have a have a second home in Cavan and uh, Dermot was one of your stars and helping you won a, an Ulster title in, in 1997. Uh, are this Cavan team, Martin, in your eyes, any closer to, to getting another Ulster title? Can they follow on in any sort of way? From, from 2020 or as some might say that they haven't got the recognition that they deserved a couple of years ago and can they progress on can they? Well probably the people looked at it from the game and, and, and two years ago was that it was played in the winter time and it was played maybe people are seeing a tight pitch in, in, in our man and everything else and now that the Clonus pitch is a lot wider it'll be a harder sod and everything else I don't buy into that at all I thought Cavan were the better side that day and they had some great victories coming back from maybe 9-10 points down and against Monon and against Down earlier on. So, you know, and Cavan played really well that day. And I think looking at the two teams, now up to the Armagh game, and I don't know what we can read into the Armagh game, and hopefully we don't read as much into the Armagh game as we did players, management, the county and all two years ago when we beat Armagh and, and Breffney Park uh, and that semi Ulster semi final, everybody thought it was only a matter of Donegal turning up for the for the for everybody was chatting up for the Ulster final, and everybody was talking about playing Dublin. And I think you know, looking at it from that time, and I know Cavan are playing Division Four, but I was at the game against Antrim, was down on the sideline, right beside them. They're physically a far bigger team than they were two years ago. They have Connor Moyna, who's a big player for them, back that didn't play that day, and and you know they're they're. You know, they're going into this game the way they want to go into themselves. Nobody really outside Cavan giving them a chance, and maybe nobody outside the players and the management is the same, maybe as the last time giving them a chance. I think Cavan actually, since two years ago, even though people say they're playing Division Four, I think Cavan have improved really up to the Armagh game. And I don't know what to make of the Armagh game. I felt Donegal had gone back Oshin, since that game two years ago. So I think this game. It was more of a toss of a coin, and I wouldn't agree with the bookies and everybody else what people are saying. I think this will go down to the wire on Sunday. Yeah. Would you agree with Martin? Maybe the Cavan are a better team than what they were a couple of years ago than Dermot? Well, a lot of the bones of the team is still there. A lot of the conditioning work would have continued. Um, I know tactically they would have got more astute in, in, in how they play and how they manage games. So you would like to think, while some of the experiences weren't great, 
that they are a lot more experienced and and now this is this bunch of players uh, you know they've played in two Ulster finals winning one of them so uh, you would like to think that there's a solid base of experience there and they can handle this type of uh, occasion on Sunday. Oshin, your voice is gone. Oshin? Yeah, you're going to mute, Oshin. Yeah, I'm back again. I've unmuted myself. Uh, okay. So I have. Uh, I was saying about Donegal, uh, Dermot, what's your take on Donegal following their, their one against Armagh? Um, because it was a huge result for Declan Boner's side because a lot of people were tipping uh, Armagh to be the, the next kingpins of, of Ulster, and that's not going to happen now because of an excellent Donegal performance. Yeah, look, at it. we talk about experience. There's, there's not much more experienced teams than Donegal you know, in this competition and definitely left in the competition in Ulster. Uh, they're, they're always managed to retain their Division One status, which has always been massive and... and you know, their key players are going, you know, going extremely well. The Ryan McHughes, Heather Mogans, Owen Vaughan Gallagher, Michael Murphy is back to himself. And then I suppose the added addition that I suppose where Cavan will worry about is the performance of Jason McGee the last day. And then Michael Langan in 2019 would have caused Cavan a lot of difficulties with his size and physique at wing half forward. So, you know, you would think that they're going quite well, they're firing quite well, but Hopefully, you know, what, what I feel is critical parts is probably the matchups on who's going to take who and in what position of the field will they have to take each other on. And then the other element is, I suppose, gaining possession is key for everything. And that's through the kickouts. You know, will, will teams press? Donegal generally try to press the kickouts. Will they do that on Sunday and force Cavan long? Will that suit Cavan because Cavan a lot of big men around the middle toward? And what would Cavan do on the Donegal kickouts? You know, Patton has a tremendous length to his kick out. The fear is if you push up on that, like in 2019, some of these kick outs can go over the top and, and they're in on goal. Uh, or do you choose to give give the kick out up and who do you give that kick out up to uh, as regards personnel? So those are the major factors for me as regards that that'll, that'll decide the game. Yeah, Martin, you're normally good with your, with your matchups and picking who's going to take on who. What's the matchups going to be on Sunday? <laughs> Very hard to know, you know. I suppose we look at it and we go back to looking at last Sunday's the Tyrone Derry game. Like Derry got all the matchups right, and Tyrone normally are very, very good at it. And it probably cost them the fact that they didn't put Connor Myler start him on Gareth McKinless in the middle of the field, probably nearly cost them the match because McKinless was the big player of the first half. So matchups, as Dermot says, is going to be important. That midfield area is going to be very important. And the kickouts we talk about, both goalkeepers. Uh, both goalkeepers have very big kickouts, long kickouts. They want it. They're very good going short, and they're they're good keepers. Now, Donegal did press the Armagh keeper Ethan Rafferty. They pressed up on him and all that there, but it's different kettle of fish with Raymond Galligan because Galligan is can can kick long, and where they knew that that Ethan Rafferty hadn't got a long kick out, and so that they could afford to press. Now the press is dangerous in a way. If it works, it's okay. But if it goes wrong, like Tyrone tried to press the second half of 14 men against Derry, and if Derry won the kick out, they were through, maybe creating a goal chance right away. So kick out's important. Matchups will be you expect Connor Brady, who's actually from Dermot's club, will probably pick up uh Michael Langan, probably two big men, both of them normally play in the middle of the field, so they'll be made for each other. And then the midfield battle, the J- Jason McGee with Thomas Thomas Galligan is going to be a big battle in that area. Two great fetchers of the ball, both of them. And you know, James Smith will probably go to full forward and he'll start inside with Paddy Lynch. Who will Donny Gall put put on him? It's probably Steve McMenamin will pick up James Smith and then he comes out the field. Maybe even Keelan Ward could follow him when he comes if he presses, pushes out the field a bit, and expect Brendan McCall to pick to, to pick up Paddy Lynch. So I just think that you know, from from Cavan's point of view, what matchups they put Jason McLaughlin the last time and Ryan McHugh, they pushed him up to the half hour line. Probably might do the same thing again. Uh, they were probably happy enough with his performance that day. The Michael Murphy battle is who they, who they, will they go with, will will they go with Killian Clark and Michael Murphy? Oh, they leave Killian Clark in the in the middle of the field and because he's been very good in the middle of the field, won in, won in a lot of ball in that area and turnovers and he, he won a lot of ball against Antrim. So I think that they might go with Paulie Faulkner, maybe at fullback on Michael Murphy plays inside, and then who's going to pick up Patty McBrady? That's probably the big ones. They'll be the big matchups, and the other ones that they feel if they can get them, if Cavan especially get that right, that they have a great chance. Yeah, um, Dermot mentioned there about uh, the big men around the middle. Will, will Donegal play all of the big men, Martin, if, if they're all fit to go? Obviously, Michael Langan, uh, Jason McGee, and and uh, Keelan McGonigal, who came on uh, as as a sub the last day. All big men. 
all fantastic footballers and fetched in there. They have the physicality for it. Do you play all three on Sunday? Well, I'd say that they're probably not. They're, I'd say he'd probably go close to the same team they played against Armagh. And, you know, having the bench is very important. And I was a wee bit worried about the Donegal bench that day, you know, because Keelan McGonigal hadn't played a lot of football, but he, he did well when he came in. So he's a big plus to have to come into the team. You know, I thought Shane O'Donnell is another player that came of age the last day. It was brilliant in the championship game for Donegal. And he gives Donegal another option up front and other players to be marked. I think the bench will be important. So I think they'll hold one of them. And it probably, it probably maybe will be Keelan McLaughlin feeling that he hasn't got enough football time and and yet to maybe to start the game. And I mean, but it's all, it's very important to have two or three good players to come off the bench. And I think the bench could be the difference on Sunday because it's going to be important. A big Clonus pitch, paying eighty minutes and everything else. The subs are very, very important to have players to come on. And just like uh, Derry dropped Emmett Bradley the last day, but he came on. And he was really, really good. I think you need an impact from the bench. It's important to have that. Yeah. What about Or McFadden Ferry, Martin? Does Declan Boner shuffle the pack? He was a regular starter. He was the he was the regular cornerback, and then he got suspended. And listen, the performance that Donegal put on the last day against Armagh. How hard is it for Declan Boner to to change that fifteen? Would you put Or McFadden Ferry back in? Well, I think it goes. And if he wants another marker in defence, he would go with him as a marker. Or McFadden Ferry, you know. He's unlucky with, with everything that, that he lost out the last day and Donegal played that well. It's hard to see Donegal changing the team. Again, he's a good man to come on. The chances are you're going to pick up maybe a yellow card. You could pick up a, and you might have replaced a player early on if you get a yellow card early on or, or you know, an injury or anything like that there or maybe even sending off or something like that can happen and change the game. So I think it's important to have a player. I don't know, maybe I would expect him maybe to hold Oren McFadden Ferry to have him to just go with the team the way the team played so well, especially the defence played very well the last day against Armagh. Now, I don't like reading too much into Armagh because when we look at Armagh's record, it's been very, very poor and they're probably of the big so-called five in Ulster or six in Ulster, whatever you have, you know, uh, looking at Antrim down and Fermanagh, maybe they're behind the rest, but them other, you feel that Armagh are the worst of them teams. So I hope Donegal don't read too much into this Armagh, into the Armagh game because uh, Armagh been, were very, very disappointing. And they were playing championship, Oshin, in my opinion, when in the first two games of the league, when everybody else was just getting ready for the league. And they were they were at championship pace, I think. And that's the only two games they really won. They beat Kildare then, lucky enough, afterwards. But that's the only games they won. So I wouldn't read, I hope we don't read as much as we read the last time into it. And we get ready because this is going to be a real battle on Sunday. Two very experienced teams and two physically very, very strong teams as well. And Cavan definitely are a lot more physical power even they had two years ago. Yeah, uh, Martin mentioned there, Dermot, about uh, how important the Donegal bench is going to be. How important is the Cavan bench going to be? Because Kane Madden came off it in that final a couple of years ago and scored 1-2. What's the strength like of the current Cavan bench, Dermot? First of all, I hope the Donegal read very much into the Armagh performance and take huge bonuses from it. I suppose we, we would have Kieran Brady, who would have been a regular for us for the last five, eight years, uh, and he's just coming back from injury. So I'd be hoping that he would be in contention and maybe definitely to be able to be some minutes into him. Martin Riley has huge experience and would have come on the last day and was instrumental in getting the goal. Uh, uh, against Antrim, so hopefully he has got more game time in the weeks in between and training. So you're hoping that he will be available and an option. And as you mentioned, Connor Madden is always a sort of an outlet there and got the fantastic goal in, in the Ulster final. So uh, uh, I can't imagine. I suppose there being too many changes. I suppose like Tony Gall from, from the last day because they done so well. But it'd just be interesting, perhaps where they may be played. I suppose from two years ago when we played. Uh, we didn't. We tried to not allow sort of matchups to happen in the positions they were. So we would have felt that Owen Brown Gallagher was going to go to centre back and Garode. So we moved Garode to the middle of the field, which may have been a little bit of help to walk over that. So, so, so Mickey and the management team will have decisions to make in relation to that. Martin already mentioned about uh, Jason McLaughlin moving up to half forward to try and curb uh, Ryan McHugh. That will be another big decision. And in that particular game. Uh, uh, Killian Clark was on Paddy McBrearty and Porrie Faulkner was on Jamie Brennan. So I suppose Mickey and his management team will be wondering do we switch? There will be major switches to switch around as Killian has been doing very well in the middle of the field. But that would be his dilemma and debate, I'd say, over these last few days. Uh, is that the way he lines out his team or, or does he restructure slightly? Yeah, you, of course, have been part of Mickey's management team. Is there another trick in the book to come from him, do you think? Uh, I hope there's many more tricks in the book to come from him. and, and uh, that opportunities arise this weekend and, and uh, 
and we take them. Um, I think Calvin are sitting in, in quite a nice position. Um, at times struggles, but we don't know what was being done at training. We don't know how heavy training was through the league, but they got the cup and got that done. And then, as I say, had a very convincing win in Corrigan Park. So I'm hoping that the players and managers will be going with great confidence and, and uh, the, the supporters won't be screaming from the roofs, but we'll be quietly confident that we can get a very good performance on Sunday. OK, Martin, Donegal done all their talking on the pitch the last day. There was a lot of stuff been set away from 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 the actual game obviously in the lead up to suspensions and, and different things and pundits had to go with Donegal and was saying various different things but Donegal didn't get dragged into that they've done all the talking on the pitch um, Donegal will be seen as raging hot favourites for this game but it's a matter of keeping that format do your talking on the pitch and, and don't let anything else uh, have an effect or matter Martin yeah, that's 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 exactly it, Oshie. And I think you know we look at the, at the you know the whole thing of the build up to the maybe even the Troll Derry game and the Armagh Donegal game was all about suspensions and getting suspensions off, and you know going up to Dublin to fight it with solicitors and barristers and everything else. And maybe both Armagh maybe and Tyrone put a lot of their energy into that rather than as you said putting the energy into maybe on the field, which is the most important thing. And you know both of them were very disappointing on the day, you know, the two teams. So I think that looking at that there, maybe, you know, from from Tony Gall's point of view, is important that they don't concentrate to, uh, on it after, uh, you know, I know Declan Warner was talking about it after the game and everybody was blaming the CCCC and everybody else was to blame. I think in the end, it was important that you concentrate on, on the team and the game and what you what you have the ability to, to look after yourself. I think that's very, very important. And I think it's important to stay like that there. This is a different game. That Armagh Donegal game was classed as maybe even Armagh slightly favourites. Donegal are going in this time as warm favourites, and Donegal don't do favourites well. We never have done favourites well in Donegal, so I think this is this is a very difficult game. I hear everybody that I'm talking to saying, "Oh, Donegal won't make the same mistake again. They won't take their eye off the ball and all that." There, it's actually saying the exact same thing as happened two years ago. And they know you know what happens if you don't perform. Tyrone found out that against Derry, they went in as red hot favourites, didn't perform. Football's all on the day, and that's when it's played. And the hungrier team won always. And uh, that's just a bit of fear I would have in Donegal that people are talking about. Our favourites for Ulster, everything else about it. You have to every game to play, and you have to go out and perform, because if you don't, uh, you know, somebody in Cavan is on to me, that's, history's going to repeat itself. 1997, 25 years ago, Derry and Cavan met in the Ulster final. So they're saying that that might happen again. So... Look at hopefully from a Donegal point of view that doesn't happen. But if Donegal are not well prepared, not ready, not right, everything about it is right. It was easy getting ready the last day, as you said. There were a lot of talk. It was all about Armas, all about the suspended players, it was all about Rian O'Neill, it was all about this. This time, you know, it's different. This time is different, and it's important that Donegal have prepared right. And you know, it'll still, in my opinion, it'll go down to the wire. Is it going to go to the wire? Just finally, then, Dermot McKeep. Yeah, I, I don't think there's going to be a big uh, uh, big pile in it. I think whoever really, uh, I know we talked about before, is the kickouts and sort of gains that possession on both sides of the teams with Hugh McFadden, Jason McGee, Michael Lang and Michael Murphy. On our side, you have James Smith, Thomas Galley and Killian Clark. Uh, uh, you know, um, a lot of big James Smith. You have a lot of sort of big players in there. So that middle third is going to be vital. And as regards who can gain the most possession and get it in, I suppose in Cavan's hope, we're hoping with James Smith and, and Paddy Lynch inside that now we have, you know, the ball winners, consistent ball winners and score getters in there that can cause a lot of uh, hassle to defenders. And that definitely was the case the last day. And we hope that that continues on Sunday. How do you handle Michael Murphy, Dermot? With great difficulty, <laughs> Oshin. Um, I suppose, you know, he's so elusive in that he goes into different places. You know, we... we we put one slash two, I would say, markers on him in 2019. And I would say that unselfish of him or wisely of him, he possibly sacrificed his game that day, created spaces for opposition, didn't really handle that much of the ball, but completely opened us up by his movement. And if you recall, that Paddy McVerty and Jamie Brennan that day made hay. He has the capacity to do that and read the game. And then if things were difficult and ball needed to be won, he has the capacity to go and do that. So it's an extremely difficult uh, uh, battle, but you have to have a man that's going to go with him and be with him and beside him as, uh, um, on most occasions in the game. Well, we'll wait to see how, how that develops. Uh, Dermot Martin mentioned it there, 25 years since uh, you yeah. guys won the, won, won the Ulster title, uh, 25 years since uh, you got your All-Star as well. 
Um, was it was it the manager in place, or was it the class and caliber of the players that that proved to be uh, the, the 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 fruit of the success that year, Dermot? Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a combination. I suppose Kevin had gone through. Martin came in in '95 or the end of '94, and Kevin had gone through quite a bad spell of six or eight first round defeats. And in that three years, we got to two finals and won one. So. He must have something on something right in relation to that. So just, I suppose, standards, collectiveness, uh, uh, plan training, a bit of a sort of a game plan, you know, all those type of things that were only coming new to the game. And the game has changed even so much more since. But but that started to come into Cavan and it came into progression. And at that time, you had a big physical team in Cavan. You, you had youngsters coming in and you had some very, very good experienced uh, players on the team as well. The combination worked extremely well for those few years, and thankfully we got a little bit of success. Yeah, you are still looking after him down there, shoes are. Yeah, nonstop. Nonstop. <laughs> still getting the free dinners, free dinners. Right. He's in Cavan. Stopped yeah. a couple of years ago, all right, but it's not. It's not too bad. Not too not bad. Too I think listening to all that there, I should think I'm ready to go back into management. <laughs> <laughs> Who would take him, Dermot? <laughs> Listen, Dermot, uh, good to have you on the programme. Uh, good to speak to you and good to see you. And uh, I would say I wish you all the best in the game at the weekend. But uh, from me and Martin's point of view, we'll be hoping that it's a, it's a Donegal success. But uh, listen, enjoy Clonus because it's, it's great to be back in Clonus. Great to be back playing football in what is seen as the home of, 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 of the Ulster Championship. And uh, we're looking forward to what hopefully will be a, a very, very good game. Thank you, Oshin. Thanks for the invite. Nice to no talk. Problem. Okay, Martin, thanks for joining us. Talk to you soon. Bye. See you, Ashin. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.